And I have to admit, all I did when we got done doing the show prep, I just shook my head. <laughs> I just shook because I want you to just tell everybody the beginning of your story. So I can do that. Yeah. So when okay. I was born, uh, uh, I was born on in June, of course. You know, the summertime. And uh, my mother didn't last in the hospital more than a couple hours, if not a day. Um, she gave birth to me and then was gone. Um, then they just pretty much gave the custody at the moment to my grandmother. They didn't give full custody, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And she brought me home from the hospital. And just a week prior to that, she had back surgery. And at that time, it was 1990. And um, they didn't do what they do now. They had her in a hard plastic back brace. And it was oh. like from here all the way down. So she couldn't bend. So when she would give, you know, change me or whatever, she couldn't put me on the floor. Um, she would have to put me on the couch or different things like that to get, you know, to be able to change me. And, um, and that's I, your grandmother, right? Yeah. Well, just so everybody who's joining in. She's talking about her grandmother that had to take care of her because your, your mother took off yes. as soon as she gave birth, a couple of yes. days after birth. Because she was a very, very, and she still is actually today. Um, nothing's really changed. She's addicted to methamphetamines. and that's, that's, that's your, your mom is addicted to that. Yes. Yeah, so everybody understand. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, and so oh, your, sorry. Grandmother had, your grandmother had to, no, I, hey, I told you, I'm just a narrator, so I, I got it <laughs> I'll keep, hey, you just keep talking. I, I'll just inter stick my head in and interrupt her. So so right, right now, we're looking at your grandmother who's got back troubles trying to take care of an infant. Yes, yes, because, see, in her time, I guess she messed up her back, you know, because that was actually her time. She would tell me stories, you know, they would have to pick their own cotton and make their own dresses and miss wow. six months of school, you know, and then have to catch up. So she was yeah. very, very hard worker and uh, had to take care of her siblings as well. So... You know, after a time, her back was just so messed up, she had to have back surgery. Which she says, actually note that she said, never, never do the back surgery. She says, <laughs> after that, you will be nope. just done for. <laughs> don't to self. Do not do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Grandma's um, advice. Don't do, grandma's advice. Don't do back surgery. Okay. Yes, that's what she said. Don't do back surgery because it actually <laughs> messed her up even more. Um and uh, she adopted me when I was seven because my mom would come in and out and she couldn't stop her from taking me, you know, she's mom. So she would take me, you know, just to spare the moment. Oh, I'm going to go get my kid. And uh, she would take me to places that words can't fathom. And um, I just remember bits and pieces of certain things, um, not too much um, detail, uh, my grandma told me some stories, of course, you know, one time that she had to come get me and um, I guess CPS called her and said, if you don't come get her, then we're taking her. Um, and so she rushed and I was in another state at this time. Oh. Um, yes. And she rushed to go get me. She picked me up. She said, because my hair was super long. Um, she wow. would always just trim my hair. She never cut my hair. So my hair was like past my butt. And wow. she said it was so natted. It was all the way up and that she had to go buy a brush and new clothes and get a hotel before she could even take me home and wow. give me a bath. Yes. Yeah, so um, the things that she went through just to get me to where I am today, you know, yeah. I'm actually, um, that's what, what makes me who I am today, though. That's why I love it so much. Your life had narcissism in it and you didn't even know it. No, I had no clue. I actually, when I left him, I'd never even knew until, so it was in March and me and the guy that I'm with now got together in August, which the 27th will mark two years. So, Good for you. Um, yeah. So wait, I just want to say, I just want to say it marks two years now but your grandmother had you at a young child. She's raising you. Your mother showed not only that she was addicted to substance, but she also proved to be self-absorbed and a narcissist. She and, still and is. You, you didn't know this. You didn't know this. And that's what I find intriguing about the story. You had no idea about narcissism, like most people. No. Nope. Your grandmother proved to be your safety your safety zone. She, she proved to be the person that, that cored out 
your character and fortified it to be who you are today. But somebody crossed your path, an ex-boyfriend, he's an ex-boyfriend now, you have a good man now, but you had an ex-boyfriend and please tell everybody that horrific story of domestic abuse, abuse and what you went through and you didn't even know it was narcissism. No, I didn't. The thing is, is I, I will also want to say is if, if, especially with the young ones um, out there, um, when your parents or your grandparents um, are telling you that it's not a good idea to be dating that person or they see you bad in them, good point. I would listen, okay? Good because point. I look up every single time and I'm like, I get it. I get it. I get it. You're right. Yeah. There was nothing she didn't say that she wasn't right about. She would tell me, he's bad news. He's going to do you wrong. And he's going to, you know, hurt you. Or he's going to leave you high and dry. And, you know, I was like, oh, no. You know, you're just older. And you don't know. And, you know. And so I'm telling you, that is one thing I will say. There was nothing that came out of that woman's mouth that wasn't right. So um, it was, it was, I think it was. The summer when I was 19, I think it was, or 18. And it was that summer, I just turned 18. And yeah. um, I was working a lot. And my brother decided to come over and was like, hey, come hang out. And I was like, nah. And he was like, just come on. And so I did. Yeah. And that was the day that I met him. And he was wow. the bad boy. And, you know, of boy. course. <laughs> and you, the surfer, and I'm the country girl, you know, and oh, he's got all these tattoos. Yeah. I'm so macho man, and yeah, yeah. the superhero. Yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I know I, I'm going to use that one, superhero. Just, yes, just, they do. They try to act like you're a superhero. They find your problem, or what you could say is your downfall, or something that you're working on, or one of your weaknesses. Yeah. And mine was family. Um, I never knew my father until I was 19 years old. And I lived with my grandmother and she had no man in her life because she was determined that she wasn't going to be treated that way anymore. And so just being just me and her, I never had that kind of experience in the men department. And yeah. so I wanted a family. I wanted kids. I wanted the happy little Pick and fits, you know, you Walt Disney really plays oh, it out real good, you know? Yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's true. So, I mean, you dream of that. And so he's seen it. And that's what he targeted. Uh -huh. And yeah. he gave me a kid. And then he was like, oh, you know, and it wasn't the way it was. You know, when I first got pregnant with my first one, he would leave me. He would go and do things that he shouldn't be doing. Um, I got left one time pregnant in Arlington, Texas. Pregnant oh while he went and did drugs. I got left on the side of the road where there was gangs walking around. My I am 19 years old. No, I was 20. I was 20 years old, pregnant. Um, I think I was oh. about six months, seven months pregnant um, and left on the side of the road because I was killing his vibe. Whoa. Yeah. Because I was telling him not to do drugs because we're having a kid. So, and so that's where I got left. I got left and I didn't know where I was. I didn't have no idea. They came back and got me a couple hours later because I sat oh. there. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. So I sat on the side of the curb. So, yeah, that was just with the first one. You know, you'd think you would have got it like a clue. Like, <laughs> a light, a light would talk. <laughs> that you're talking about but they come back about so so sweet i'm sorry and yeah. see when you're yeah. vulnerable like that and you're not exposed yeah. to those certain things yeah. or warned about those certain things to the extent you don't know so it's like oh okay you're sorry you won't do it again yeah when you were pregnant and i was trying to wrap my brain around this but i didn't want you to tell me everything about it so we could talk about it in the show when you were pregnant and you had to sleep on the end of the bed Please explain that. Oh, uh, okay. You just hit a target. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, oh, I was I did tell you you're going to need tissue. One. I did tell you you're going to need tissue if you don't have it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm fine. But, it's just the last one. The last one. Um, after so many years of it and uh, waiting on them hand and foot, um, doing whatever you can. How many, years, how many years total were you together, by the way? Ten. 
And you and you started dating him at what age? Um, eighteen, uh, roughly 18. around eighteen. Right, right. I had my so, first that, one. I know for a fact I had my first one when it was three months prior to my twenty-first birthday. Okay, all right. And so now you're with him. Yeah. And now we're getting to where your eyes are starting to kind of like, uh, you know, open it up, and I'm not, you know, I'm not being treated right. Okay. Yes. But you're pregnant. See, and before I got pregnant with my last one, see, I didn't even know I was pregnant because, see, oh, okay. we, were, we weren't we were even having any intercourse or anything at that time. Right. I think it was like a one-time thing, and boom, there yeah. it was. Um, right. Because I was having trouble with my oldest because he's got a lot of um, mental disabilities. And so, okay. with that being said, I was battling with that by myself, plus, you know, having another child, and then come to find out I was pregnant, and then, you know, um, he's done moved in his sister and her boyfriend, which were abusive to each other, and Ooh, wow. um, I had no control over that. My house, my stuff, and I had no oh. control, and so I was dealing with all of this, and I didn't even know I was pregnant, And but where you were going with that was... Um, why it's so emotional is because the last one, it was just really hard, um, just emotionally in general. Um, but yes, that's when he would, we kind of had our bed up against the wall. And so okay. there was only his side and he slept on that side. And I asked him, Hey, can you, can we like trade spots or move the bed or whatever? Um, because after the third kid, you know, your hips are separated so many times and, you know, me being so little and come to find out I had my first two were five pounds and certain ounces. And my, uh, third one was seven pounds. Exactly. And so he was a big baby and I was in so much pain and, um, when I would get up off the bed, you know, cause you have to constantly have to get up to go pee. And so mm -hmm. my hips would catch and it would hurt and I would just cry and I couldn't move and I'd be stuck there and then you have to pee and then you didn't want to pee on yourself. So then you were like, oh, um, so since he wouldn't move, um, cause he's like, no, I ain't moving. I'm not going, blah, 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 blah. this is my spot. I would sleep on the end of the bed. And so that's where I would come back and just lay there. Um, he never forced me to lay there, of course, but where else was I going to lay, you know? Um, okay, so, so you laid there because it was easier to get up or yes, when you had to pee? easier to just roll off the bed because, you know, my belly. And so yeah. it was, and then I didn't have to like crawl or do any of that movement because if I woke him up, uh, like I actually gave birth to my second one all natural because of I was I walked into the hospital dilated to a ten because I was oh scared to walk I was scared to oh wake him goodness. up and my sister oh my, what I call her my sister we were living with her at the moment before we moved to Corpus um, and she it was like four o'clock in the morning it was about four thirty. No, it was four o'clock in the morning when I first started, you know, having my contractions. And I was like, eh, you know, it's, it's, eh, you know, I'll fill it out. I had an appointment at eight o'clock that morning. And so okay. it got about 4.30 and she woke up for a, th a glass of water. And she's just, she's a very um, blunt person as well. And so she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And she's like, are you sure? And she's like, why don't you go wake him up? And I was like, no, 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 no. And she was like, okay. So she goes back. Well, she's already had a kid herself. And so she's sitting there and she hears me. Oh, oh, oh. She's like, Tamara, those are five minutes apart. Like, you're in oh, labor. Wow. You're wow, in labor. Yeah, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't go wake him up. Don't go wake him up. Because, like, I have an appointment at 8 o'clock. I can make it. I'll be fine. And she was like, you're going to go wake him up. If you don't go wake him up, I'm going to go wake him up. And I was like, no, no, no. Well, she goes in there and just like slams open the door and is like, get up. It's time for, you know, you to take her to the hospital. She's having a baby. And he goes, whatever. No, blah, blah. I'm not doing it. She's probably just having Braxton and Hicks and don't even know what she's talking about. Previous, I just had a kid prior to this, you know, um, three years prior. And so with all of it going on and everything like that, um, he was just using excuse after excuse. Um, and she was like, here's you some money. Take this girl to the hospital now. Um, right. Time yeah. we went and got gas and everything. I could not grab my seatbelt from here and buckle it. That's how much pain I was in. 
Um, so I got to the hospital. He made me walk from the parking lot too. He parked a car and finished smoking a cigarette <laughs> while I walked to the to the inside by myself, which they were remodeling it. And so I had to walk up the ramp. And so I walk up a ramp and by this time I'm like oh my gosh and so they hand me the paperwork i'm like i can't pull that out i can't pull that out like this hurts and um i guess as calm as i was i was a little bit more calm you know and so she was like no you gotta fill this out and i'm like no listen lady like <laughs> it's coming i'm a little busy here <laughs> i'm a little busy here like and so she's like okay 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 so she gets it well time i get back they cut my pants off and they were like, check me. And they were like, you might be able to have your doctor get here in time. Because it's like, I think it was, mm, it was roughly six o'clock or so in the morning. And they were like, we just called her, but you're dilated to a 10. She goes, I don't know how you walked in here. She oh goes, goodness. how did you even do that? Just more or less, like, I guess you get tired of it. Um, you have to get tired of it. You, I mean, I got told by all my friends. I pretty much lost all my friends. I lost all, and I didn't really lose them. They were just kind of like on the back burner because they're still my friends. So they're still going to be there. Um, but he, they make it kind of, he makes it kind of sound like they are not, you know? Um, right. and so you get tired of that. Um, I got tired of, I was never allowed to go anywhere. I was never allowed to go anywhere with him. Um, he was, a, he, you know, we lived in Corpus by the beach. Um, after three vehicles, owning three vehicles myself, paying for, um, I even, you know, you go back and forth with them too. Like, it's over. It's not. It's over. It's not. Um, like a yo-yo. Like a yo-yo yes, in a yes. relationship. Yeah. Yes. And you get tired of that. Like, that's not steady. That's not normal. That's not what you're supposed to do. And that's it's not, not what normal. I wanted. Yeah. And it's, so. It, it's not normal. No, right. it's not. It's and normal. He even would go to the point where, because I had a vehicle, I had the house, of course, I tricked it in, you know, to get my way into, you know, those kind of things. And you kind of just have to slowly get out, because if not, then you kind of get screwed over, especially when well, you have I children. Want, I want to jump on that for a minute, because I know what you're talking about. I just want to make sure everybody understands. So you were actually, when you when you got the place... I know there's more that you you can tell, but you, you don't have to right now. But when you got the place, you were already preparing just in case. You I already to made a plan B. Yeah, I made plan B. And <laughs> when you know that you're in that situation, like you're going to keep trying, of course. Right. You're going to keep trying to fix it. Okay, maybe, maybe if I do this, maybe if I do that, maybe if I do this, everything will be okay. It's not. It's not going to. And so once that goes through and it doesn't work, you know, you keep going, okay, well, plan B. I got to keep working on that plan B. And so that's what I kind of did. And so when you slowly just keep on and keep on and keep on going and nothing keeps working and you get tired of it. And I think it was more of less um, that I was really struggling with my last child was what really um, came down to it. And when I was pregnant and I came to the terms of, I just, I, I guess I'm going to give my third one up for adoption because I just can't figure out my way out just yet. And I don't want him to be exposed to this and um, have the, the issues or the mental, you know, problems or even depression that my other two have from seeing you to get your tubes tied after the second one. Cause I don't want more than one kid oh. and now you get to suffer. So I'm not signing those paperwork and I was sleeping in the baby room and then on the floor and different things like that um, while he locked me out of the bedroom. Those are the kind of things that kind of just started pushing me away. Um, so make sure, make sure we're gonna, he locked you out of the bedroom. I just want everybody to understand that. She's sleeping on the floor. Yes. Okay. So, so it was, what's right. interesting is, hey, say somebody just put on the screen. I don't know if you can read what it says. It's to you. Very strong and brave. You, you you actually survived that time. Yes. But this a lot of it. makes you stronger, though. Those things huh? right there make well, you stronger. Listen, your grandmother would have been extremely proud of you. Yes. Because you're not a quitter. You're an amazing person who's very open and frank and honest. And you were with someone who was not honest. Yeah. 
who put you to the point that you were willing to give up your child, that you you were willing to lose what came out of you. Yes, and that's to, something to protect. I, I want to do. Huh? I never would want to do that. Like when I found out I was pregnant, like I cried, of course, because I didn't want to bring another child into this world um, that would have to suffer like that. Um, and maybe stressed out even more, you know, worrying about it. Um, so it was kind of, it was kind of hard, um, even at first, but then I was like, I can do it, you know? And then after when he told me that, I was like, you know what? I was sitting there crying and crying like I've never cried before, of course, because you're, mm -hmm. the decision even come across your mind would, is just wrong. Right. You know, you shouldn't have to deal with that, especially being in a, family you know you know, right, right right yeah you know you should um, be able to work it out yeah and so i was like you know what god has given me this baby has given me this baby for a reason and i'm not gonna let that stop me i i can pretty much do anything that i get thrown at you know anything that life wants to throw at me i can do it so i was like let's Good for do you. it uh Somebody's do you, do you, is that for you? Do you see the screen? Let's go, Travis. That's Bailey. That's actually my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, so I just thought he's giving you a shout out there. That's so, her, so that's, he actually calls her. He's only three. Oh God, I'm cry now. Thanks a lot, Bailey. <laughs> um, he's three. Every time she walks over, she's a um, really beautiful girl. She's fifteen and. Um, these are the kind of girls that kind of look up to me too, and we talk oh. and stuff. And he calls her. That's his girlfriend. So oh, oh my in, God. he's like attached to her, and it's like, oh, it's like, it's it's like it's who are you gonna look for her? <laughs> uh, much so, a do not give up person. Yes. And, and, you know, I still struggle. I mean, my page is very strong, and I do that also to make sure that they know um, that that's what I believe and that's what I, my goals are. Um, I, I, I'm not all the way there yet, of course. You know, um, I still struggle with a lot. Um, I mean, I might, you know, hey, let's do this. You know, that can't stop me. And, oh, you know, very positive, but I still have my demons where they're like, They'll come and they'll, yeah. you know, try right. to attack me. But that's right, when right. you have to overcome them. You can't let them win and you got to keep pushing. Yes, because, I mean, you when you're observant and you see, I mean, I've learned from, I've had friends and, you know, let's just say I only have a couple of friends. And that reason being is because you can't have too many. And um, right. you learn who's real and who's not. And from all my experiences growing up and seeing being done the way I've done and, everything like that i mean you get real you know observant and you're like hmm, really i'm gonna sit back and watch for a minute and very, very important so, yes and so when you yeah. see those actions and you don't see any care and you know right. learning oh i love you well if you love me why are you words, doing me this action, way? yeah right words action it, uh, so, something's missing Yes, and, 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 and when I'm cooking, and literally I'm cooking and sitting at the table with our children while you're drinking beer and getting 30-pack after 30-pack, it got pretty bad to the point where he was drinking four 30-packs by the wow. end of our relationship. Yes. And so when you're sitting there drinking, you're like, oh, not, I'm not going to get my food until I'm done eat, uh, until I'm done drinking my last beer. And so I have to put your fork on your plate wrap it up in plastic, stick it in the microwave. And then when you're done drinking beer and I've done put the kids in bed, gave them the shower, done their homework, whatever it might be, set their outfit out, you know, um, put them in bed and make sure that they're, you know, stay in bed. Cause see my oldest right. really struggled with that. He wouldn't go to sleep. Right, um, right. And right. I mean, you get tired of it. I mean, I let go um, my biggest dream in my world like in my world anyways, was to be a game warden. And I was studying for that and going to criminal justice. And I couldn't, my oldest wasn't sleeping. So I'd be up until three o'clock in the morning once he was done. And then, you know, I would have to study. And then I started, you know, failing classes. So I had to let it go. 
And uh -huh. for that reason, you know, so once all this stuff just keeps piling up and you're seeing no results of him even, mm -hmm. even caring, but just still doing the same thing. And to the point where he was like, and it was kind of like, I just kind of had to check it off. Okay. 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 So one of the things I had to check off was he would say, oh, you have the car, you have the house, you have this. I don't have anything. If I had a car, I would leave. Okay. Wow. So he said wow. that in December. So February or March, when my income tax came in, I went and bought him a vehicle. Oh, and then, there's your vehicle. Now get oh, out. No.